to start with, we had no idea. So we wrote to the local MP and he said, I have nothing to do with it. Go to TT, traffic control. We wrote, we wrote, we wrote to him and next day came the reply, nothing to do with me. <laughs> and then he gave me the right place. There was only one office in the whole country and that was in the parliament, inside the parliament. When you enter there, on the right hand side there was just a small room and a few officers sitting there. So we went there and they guided us what to do because we had no idea where to start. So they gave us the idea that you start from the Hyde Park and you finish in the Hyde Park. And that's what we did. But before the start, it was on Sunday. On Saturday it was cancelled because everybody thought it's too cold, nobody will come, it will be a joke, people will laugh. And I stood uh, just me and 20 others, other side. And they said, no, when they finished the meeting, after the meeting, I said, all right, here's notification from the uh, Scotland Yard. There are two signatures. One is mine, one is Scotland Yard chief inspector. And this is in my name. So I have made a commitment and the procession will take place tomorrow. So I was told in un no unclear way that whatever you do is your personal thing, is your private thing, nothing to do with us. I mean, fine, that's no problem. And three of us, which is Islam, Sayyid Muhammad Sadwari, myself, and my son, Waqar, he was 11 years old, were in the Hyde Park. There's a place called Reformers Tree. That's where we started. My name is Waqar Haider and um, I'm part of Hussein Islamic Trust UK, uh, which my father founded back in 1982. And our prime aim and objective each year is to organise um, the Arabian procession of Imam Hussein al in London. In the first Arabian procession in 1982, I was 11 years old. And for me as a child, it was very exciting. You know, wow, we're going to actually go outside in London and say Ya Hussein. Um, so for, for, for a children's point of view, that was exciting, you know. The night before, my father and my sister and other people pa um, painting um, like banners in English um, and these sort of things. That was all, all quite um, new to me as a child, seeing these things in English. Because as a child, all you saw was Arabic. Any alam you saw in a Hussein Yeh or a Majlis, any flag you saw was in Arabic. So it was the first time I was seeing a little bit of English. Just three of us. And three coaches lined up there, and at least 120 police officers sitting inside. And three of us. Uh, I said, all right. Then we have the about seven, no, seven, no, about may, maybe nine feet or ten feet high, Mola um, Abbas Salam. We unfolded it, we started. Uh, and then we saw. About 40 people is coming with Alam and doing the Matam. They are doing Matam, they are coming. And they were from Peterborough, Imam Barga. And the uh, priest there was uh, Hujat Islam al Mashadi. I don't remember his full name. And uh, then slowly and slowly it grew up to about 100 plus. In the very first procession, um, it was December the 18th, 
and it was a very cold day. So the very first thing I remember was the night before checking the, the BBC weather forecast um, after the 9 p.m. news, how cold is tomorrow? And it was very cold. It was about zero degrees temperature, it was wet. It wasn't raining, but it was damp and it was icy. So it was, it was, very, it was very cold uh, on the day. My very small role on, at the very first Urbane was to hold the flag. We had one alum only, one alum, one flag. So it was to carry that into Hyde Park. Parking was quite far away. We were in Reformers Tree, which is in the center of, of Hyde Park. So we had to walk, you know, slowly, slowly, slowly from the car to the center of Hyde Park. We got to the center of Hyde Park, there was no one there. Besides Molan Sazwari and my father, there was three of us there. And then I unraveled the, the flag, the alam of Hazrat Abbas salam, for the first time in Hyde Park. And then after a short while, because people, people could see the alam, we could see people gradually, slowly coming towards us. Because for everybody, this was a, was a new concept and a new place. Many, many people didn't know where Reformers Tree was in Hyde Park. All they knew was Hyde Park. So it was, it was all very, very new. So, if, uh, so my memory of the day is it was cold. Um, there was a, a very few of us, uh, not quite sure what to expect, what the reaction would be from the public. Um, so we, had a, we had Azan, we had Namaz, Salah. We then had obviously Matam and Nohahani. And this is all something very, very new. So it, I was quite apprehensive not knowing how the public would and the police who were there how they would treat us and what they think of what we're doing what we were doing uh, then was normal to us but normally it was confined to centers to Husseiniyas, to imam baras to mosques or to people's houses in fact in those days most majars were people were held in people's own houses as there were so few centers uh, throughout muharram and safar so um it was really to see you know how would it you know work on the day anyhow we i I, I was determined that no matter what happens, if even if you have 20 person or 10 people, we will go through. And we came out to the speaker's corner and then on the uh, main road and then back into the... So that's how it happened. Uh, there was one friend of mine, Mr. Bukhari, he came running. Uh, Where's the Tabarruk? I said, no Tabarruk. He had his 500, uh, this Mercedes. He just jumped into it, went somewhere, and came back with about 200 drinks, cans. And everybody really enjoyed it because they were tired. They had gone through about for two, more than two hours. And that's how it started. Ashhadu <laughs> Allah. I think one of the biggest challenges uh, when the procession first started was the fact that there was no similar procession in central London. And um, the challenge was A, to um, find out how to do a procession, B, to explain to the police and the authorities what the procession was about. Because in those days you, you didn't have WhatsApp or internet or Google, you couldn't type in Imam Hussein or Hussein and find out who he was or what happened in Karbala. 
in those days even libraries had very, very few books on Islam in public libraries. And about Shiaism, probably there were no books at all in any public library which you'd normally find in the country. To start with, I did it as ibadat, just ibadat, nothing else in my mind. I was just, just I, I go and pray every day, you know, it's ibadat. That's what I was doing. But then I started thinking, what we are doing on the road? Why we are doing it? Is it serving any purpose? So slowly you, believe me, it has taken 35, 36 years, slowly to evolve, you see? And we have got many things like, uh, and the most important is education team. That team is headed by Zain Ali, and he, he has done a wonderful job with it. Uh, they have meetings. Uh, last year meeting was uh, addressed by Dr. Shimali. He advised them. Before that, other almas advised them, and they do a wonderful job. And what they do, they are not in the procession. They are on the footpath. They are spaced about 10, 8 meters apart. And they have got a special turban, says. And they can, they can, they are recognized. So if somebody shows interest, then go and talk to him. And don't just give it to everybody. Because what happens is if you give it to everybody, they will just throw it away. It's of no use. At that time, the first thing was just to educate, to explain what we were trying to do. That, of course, was to work out a route, where to start the procession, how to get the, the permission, how to end it. Um, even more difficult was how to tell people about it. How do we inform the centres? There was no like list of centres in the UK. Most centres in those days didn't have their own buildings. They would normally hire a hall for, for 10 days of Muharram or for Arabian. They were, in, in London, there, I think there's only, at the time, two buildings in the whole of London, which were Shia centres. Everybody else were hiring halls. So to communicate was a real challenge. Also, we had nothing. You know, we had no mic system, we had no banners, no placards, no alums, no flags, nothing at all. So we started from scratch, trying to get things together. Um, so in that sense, it was um, a, a real challenge. One thing I want to mention, which is very important. In the beginning, the People who supported, I must not forget them. Shaheed Ayatollah Medul Haki was one of the strongest supporters. He was always there. Sayyidina Bahadur Loom was with him all the time. Aga Almi was always there. There were the all, three main Alims, always there, always prepared to help me. If I want something, whatever it is, they will do it. Then, uh, going from there, we have non Alim who supported me. Uh, for example, there was Shah Saab from uh, Forest Gate. Uh, there was Mustafa Gokhal. Uh, he was a very strong supporter. And he was always there. And for the first 15 years or so, he used to do Ziyat al at the end. He will come in the beginning, stay up to the end, and do the Ziyat al uh, there was one person who also died, uh, Ashur Kazmi. Sayyid Ashur Kazmi was a poet, a wonderful man, and he stood next to me all the time. No matter what I tell him, he will always be with me and have supported me. So in this, the success of this depends upon many, many people's I uh, can't remember, my memory is very bad really. Uh, not one, two, dozens, hundreds of people who helped me uh, to make this a procession a success, which is today. Today is one of the biggest uh, procession in the West, if not the. And I assure you, I, I haven't done it anything. I, to start it, I organized it and so on. But the people who helped me, they really, their dedication is the important thing. They were dedicated to make it a success. And this is how it happened. And uh, people are not from one community, I can say. 
In the beginning, there were lots of Iranians. Still, there are Iranians, but they were the strongest supporter of the procession of Arbaim. The Arabs came in, and uh, I will not name anybody. I think it's changed, the awareness we now have of Arbain has changed so much. Um, we all know of the campaigns of the last few years, you have Who's Hussein in London, you have the 10th Day.com in Manchester, you have um, Stand With Dignity in New York, you have a, a very big campaign in Bombay and throughout India. So in terms of the ability now to spread the message, it's a lot easier than before. Because you now have the internet, you have mobile phones, um, you have Snapchat, Facebook, all these medias where, you, where if they're used for the right reason rather than the wrong reason, it's a lot easier now to explain the message of Sayyidi Shahada, Imam Sayyidi Salam. So in that sense, it's much easier now to get the message out compared to previously where it was much more difficult where you were using a manual typewriter and you were sending out invitations to centres throughout the UK. That was a much more laborious process. We still do send out posters and flyers to every single centre that we know of in the UK. So they can put that up in the, in the Majalis and distribute the flyers to promote the event. And I still believe there's a lot of, pe lot of people, even though the Arabian procession has become the largest procession in the UK and in Europe and probably in the, in the West in terms of the number of people coming together at one time, at one place to mourn Karabala. But, um, but there are still lots of people who have not been. Non-Muslims. Uh, they, were, they were curious mostly and they will ask questions. Uh, with few exceptions, uh, the comments were not uh, rude or bad, uh, just asking questions, what, what are you doing? And that's why we have this uh, education team and their job is to make sure they answer the questions. And uh, I think we have educated a lot of people about Arbain. Uh, in the first four or five years, I have to give a lecture to the police as well. And when I go to the Scotland Yard, uh, they will ask uh, about it. So generally there are five, six officers sitting there and I give them a lecture, short lecture, of what is Arbain. <laughs> So every year it's a challenge for us to try and get that message out so that everyone know that if you cannot go to Karbala, I mean the whole idea of Arabian is what? The reason why we do the procession is for those people who cannot reach Karbala on Arabian, for whatever reason, to come to Marble Arch, to come to London in the same spirit and, remem and remembrance, remember and mourn for Sayyidi Shahada. That is the whole idea of the holding the Arabian Masira. And it is a challenge every year to try and go through all the various media outlets to get the awareness out there so people know this is the date, this is the time, this is the venue. And that's always a challenge every year to get that message out. And it has become easier, especially over the last few years, because of the various new media ways to do it. And of course, you now have these Shia channels on TV, which before we didn't have. Ten years ago, there were no um, Shia TV channels at all in the West. Now you have several of them. So we try, they obviously help also in promoting. So if you're TV, for example, are there on the day. So you're all helping to get that message out and to promote the event. Electronic media has really done a wonderful job for us, for the Arabian procession. Because now people know. Uh, print media can't do that. Nobody, nobody go and write, uh, uh, you write an article and there's somebody going to read it for an hour. No, nobody will. But if it's on the TV, they watch it, they know it, and they know exactly when is urban procession, when it will start, when it will finish, they know everything. Anything else they want, we have the www.urbainuk.com, and all the details are there. <laughs>
Every year, every Urbane on the first Sunday, either after Urbane Day or if Urbane Day falls on Sunday, i.e. the 20th of Safra, then we'll hold on that day. So hopefully people now understand it's always a Sunday. And the reason for that is on Sunday is the only day in London where there's free parking. So this year, for example, we had about more than 20 coaches which came from different centres from throughout the UK. And for them, it's a lot easier. They can come down to London, there's free parking, it's not an issue. And also, most people do come by car on the day. But it is a family event. So there are children coming, there are people coming in wheelchairs, and most people come by car. A lot do come by train and by tube, but I would say the majority come by car. So for them, Sunday is the best way to do it. So I'm so glad that it has evolved. And in these 37 years, we never have any complaint from the police or from the council. That's one side of it. The other side, because I keep telling every time we have a meeting, I start with this to all the volunteers, that this procession is neither mine nor yours. The ownership of this procession belongs to Imam Zamana. Those who come to attend it, remember, they are the guest of the Imam, not you. You are just Khadim. You are there to help them. My father is still um, the patron, the organiser of the Urban Session. So he's the, the person, the, the head, in a way, anything, any problems he resolves at the top. But in terms of, um, I think it's, it's very much a teamwork effort. Uh, we have now about 300 volunteers and we have about um, 35 stewards. They are our, our senior uh, sort of like volunteers uh, who man different teams of the day. So um, I'm simply a, a small wheel in the whole operation of Urbane, but it has now become a very big operation in terms of logistics, of management. Because when you've got 300 volunteers and you're trying to manage about 15 to 20,000 people, there's a lot of work to be done before the event, on the day and after the event. And Urbane procession now On paper, I am the head. I am the whatever you call it. But in practice, Wakar does all the work. My grandson does the work. The whole family, because I can't do physical work anymore. It's very difficult for me. So I will, I mean, Wakar works sometimes. 20 hours, 18 hours a day for our main procession. I mean, up to two o'clock in the night he's working for it, which I can't do. So I'm really proud to have a son like him uh, who does such a hard work and uh, trying to expand it, trying to make it better. Try, this is I do give advice, but he works very, very hard. I mean, there are many examples. For example, the f of one year when the Zari was coming, there was problems. And he went on and on on telephone to Lahore, to Karachi, uh, to my younger brother. Then my younger brother went there and he knew them. He said, I'm sitting here. Till this is complete, packed and taken to the airport, I'm not moving. He went in the morning, he said, I'm not going anywhere. And they did it, took it to the airport. Airport, we have already arrangement made that it will be loaded on the PIA and come straight to London. So, and I can't do all this. Vakar is always there on telephone, calling this person, calling that person, calling the manager of the PIA that uh, we are having this thing for tomorrow, uh, please have this space and so on. 
everything he does. And Allah gave him long life and health uh, because he is the main person now for the success of Arbaine procession.